The Amazon rainforest is the largest remaining rainforest in the world and contains an unparalleled diversity of species. Spanning 6.7 million square kilometers across nine different countries, the Amazon is so vast that it influences worldwide weather patterns and helps to stabilize the planet's climate. The Amazon is regarded as the lungs of the world, taking in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Deforestation not only eliminates carbon absorption, but it also releases the enormous amount of carbon stored in the forests of the Amazon. If we are to tackle global climate change, it is therefore fundamental that we conserve the rainforest. Deforestation from activities such as illegal logging, oil exploration, and agriculture threaten the Amazon rainforest. It is estimated that an area the size of three football pitches is destroyed every minute. I'm here in the Manu Biosphere Reserve, a UNESCO World Heritage Site in southeastern Peru. This is where I'll be wearing two hats, one as a rainforest conservation volunteer with Crease, the other as a journalist. My aim is to better understand and highlight the important role the Amazon rainforest plays for its people, wildlife, and the future of our planet. There are many facets to rainforest conservation and initiatives are carefully planned before they are put into practice. The conservation and research program at Crees includes monitoring wildlife and the different types of rainforest. The data collected by scientists and volunteers can help us better understand the effects habitat change has on certain species. Rainforests are being destroyed at an alarming rate, like there's lots of forests being cleared every year um, and we're losing lots of valuable forests. And if we don't start to understand the effects of regenerating forests and how well those forests can survive into the future, we could lose a lot of species um, and all our primary forests could be gone before our eyes before we know it. So if we don't research this now and find out the real effects and actually save the primary forests that we have left, we could be real in real problems in the future. De igual manera, al momento después de talarlo, eh, empiezan toda esa parte a limpiarlo y no hay, o sea, no hay paso para los animales ni las aves. Ellos se quedan sin paso. Es como decir, una persona no puede pasar sin el bote de río a este lado. ¿no? Es igual sucede con los animales y las aves también. ¿no? I was inclined to work with a grassroots conservation organization because I believe they often have stronger support from surrounding communities. In order for a volunteer project to be sustainable, the local people need to support the cause and benefit from it as well. The conservation program at Crees doesn't just solely focus on the rainforest, it also considers the local people living within and around it and helps them work towards living sustainably. Agroforestry projects have volunteers plant valuable hardwoods and softwoods that the local people steward as an enterprise. From an environmental perspective, by planting these trees amongst crops on deforested land, carbon can then be captured from the atmosphere, combating some of the negative effects of deforestation. Biogardens are another community initiative that helps local farmers build gardens using sustainable agricultural techniques from the Manu Learning Center. A fruitful garden provides locals with homegrown food, farming business skills, and improves nutrition amongst the community. One of the sponsors of my project brought to my attention the importance of respecting tribal people's rights, as the volunteer group I am working with works alongside indigenous people from nearby regions. With Crees, there are strong ties to both the local and indigenous communities. The Karos community even welcomes the Crees volunteers to come visit at the end of their placement. What I didn't originally think about and want to elaborate on a bit further is that not all tribes should be contacted. There are many uncontacted tribes in Peru who are being brutally wiped out through contact with oil workers and illegal loggers. These tribes are at risk of extinction from disease and violence through contact with outsiders. It's just food for thought for any traveler that's keen to experience indigenous culture. Contact for them should be a choice. Development in the Peruvian Amazon, including oil and gas exploration and illegal logging, has sparked conflict about the human rights and land rights of indigenous people. I have knowledge with respect to, for example, the petroleum in the lado of Quillabamba. The aqueduct that has installed, for example, has affected and has brought a lot of contamination, for example, in the fish, animals. And we are very close because La Han Oil también está atrás de explotar hidrocarburos acá en Madre de Dios. 
Y para nosotros es una gran preocupación porque la petrolera normalmente viene y directamente ha hacen tratos con los presidentes de las comunidades nativas, ¿no? sin respetar, por ejemplo, a la Federación del Río Alto Madre de Dios, que es la Penamá. Entonces, creo que esto trae bastante contaminación y lo que pasa es que la petrolera nunca te hace ver las cosas negativas que puede traer más adelante. Living sustainably and harmoniously with nature is the indigenous people's way of life. Their land is their livelihood, which makes them incredibly vulnerable to the negative effects of deforestation. Ahora, um, solía exagerado, fuerte, quema al esto, ¿no? Al esto, digamos, a las plantas así hace secar. También mucha lluvia ha cambiado bastante. Ya no es como antes ya. Porque antiguamente, por ejemplo, nuestros antepasados, ellos se guiaban, por ejemplo, en la lunación y podíamos programar, por ejemplo, una pesca, una siembra de, de ciertos productos. Pero ahora, por ejemplo, yo, nosotros nos damos cuenta que ahora tú no te puedes programar, ¿no? porque antiguamente el verano empezaba en mayo, pero en mayo, junio, julio, eh, tenemos presencia de lluvia. ¿no? Y cada vez el clima está cambiando más fuerte y también la producción ya casi está bajando porque ya no lo acompaña también el clima. ¿no? Eso sí es un gran cambio que está habiendo a nivel mundial y también en las comunidades. I think it's very easy to feel overwhelmed when dealing with large-scale issues such as rainforest destruction and climate change. Tackling these issues begins with awareness and then small steps in the right direction, such as choosing sustainably grown products and recycling paper. For those of you who like to get your hands dirty, check out local conservation projects or incorporate volunteer work into your travels. The scary truth is that if we continue along with these current deforestation rates, more than half of this majestic rainforest might not be here in another 20 years. We picked this frog up last night on one of our amphibian transects and uh, amphibians are a really important indicator of habitat quality and habitat change and that's why we're studying them here at the MLC. The blue-headed macaw is a poorly known vulnerable species with a declining population. I'm here because macaws come, along with a whole host of other birds, to build clay lake to consume soil which helps neutralize toxins in the diet. This gives us a perfect opportunity to study them close up and assess the population here at the MLC. Este es un pequeño mamífero que se pone en el tomajo para identificar ¿no? las especies que hay en este hábitat. En la Amazonía peruana, eh, más del 60% de las plantas tienen uso y muchas de ellas son medicinales. Es por eso quizá una de las razones más importantes para conservar eh, todo este medio ambiente. We've just taken this butterfly from a butterfly trap and you can tell that it's a female because it doesn't have um, hairy bits on the back of its wing close to its body. 